Hi guys, and welcome back to Diary of an Airport Bartender. I am feeling better. The whiskey and the ramen did help, although my sinuses are still running amok. Um, and I have one of those stupid dry persistent coughs that never leave and always come up at the worst times, like during the act two of your play, which is not only annoying, but kind of ironic considering the play that I'm doing, which is The Cripple of Inishman. And if you know the play, you know why it's kind of funny. If you don't know why, you should look it up. Or you should just come see the play in Torrance. You know, whatever. But it is that time again, and we're going to do part two of the Full Moon series. So here we go. Now this story started at the top of my shift, like barely clocked in. Giving me a preview of how beautiful this night was really going to be. So I'm clocked in, I'm getting things set up, and I overhear the guy at the end of the bar talking to this girl next to him. And I realize that the bartender before me has left me with a mess to clean up by the name of Drunken Number One. And the first thing that he says to me is, do we, do we have a beer for five dollars? I just wanted to walk away at that moment. I mean, I could go home, right? I just clocked in. Because we're at an airport. There's nothing for five dollars. And two, if you're being cheap with your beer, you're not going to tip. So why do I want to serve you? But we figured out something for him to get, and of course he didn't tip me, so it was fine. He's drunk anyway. So he starts talking to the girl next to him again, and they get talking on the subject of veterinary sciences and vets and whatnot, because she is a vet or works with a vet. I don't know. I didn't hear the whole story. But I did hear that he said, oh yeah, I got sewn up by a vet one time in Mexico. I don't want to know that story. I don't need to know that. Because I'm guessing if you had to go to a vet instead of a doctor, you were probably not doing, you are probably doing something you weren't supposed to. But I don't know. So as that was going on, I get drunk in number two, sit down right next to drunk in number one. And he orders a Corona and he wants a menu. And I didn't realize how drunk he was until he wanted to order. And he got the onion, he wanted to get the onion cheesy chili string fries. Now, although those sound delicious, we don't have those. So I had to figure out what he wanted, which was the chili cheese fries. So I put that order in for him. And he's an older guy, he had a beard. And as they came out, I gave it to him, I gave him a fork. And he just goes at it. He's just shoveling it in his mouth, getting it everywhere, all over his beard. I'm like, awesome. I mean, we've all had those drunken nights, but not usually in public. And it was 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and the sun was still out. But whatever. So it's just getting everywhere, almost falls on the ground. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, he's, he might not pay. I have to watch out for him because he's so drunk, he might not even know he needs to pay. But as I was trying to finish up with drunken number one, drunken number two decides to leave. He didn't even finish his beer. And I realized after he left that he just left me cash, cash with a really nice tip. So awesome. So since drunken number one didn't tip, he tipped me fine. Drunken number two tipped me great. But it was just it was a lovely start to my, to my day. And I knew it was going to be one of those nights because of them. So what I want to know is your stories from the top of your shifts that let you know it was going to be one of those nights. <laughs> so leave those in the comments and I will get enough of those eventually and I will do a Drunken Tales video. And like always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if we can get those 50 subscribers, we will do a giveaway. Thanks guys. See you next time.